Evening guys, James here. I hope you are all well. Okay, so this evening's live. I'm gonna whiz through these very quickly. Six of the most common fat loss mistakes that I see clients before they come work with me making time and time again. And I'm just gonna delve into them in a little bit more depth than a post that I made earlier in the week. And hopefully that's gonna be um, of use to you. It doesn't matter whether you only tick one of these boxes or whether it's all six. If you know that you need to start making some changes, then obviously feel free, comment below, private message me, uh, and we can have a chat. Failing that, if you know that there's a family member or one of your friends is sick and tired of the continuum of losing X amount of pounds, putting it back on, doing the fad diets and the constant yo-yo and not getting any results, then please share this with them and hopefully it will give them some insight and some help. Okay. So, uh, number one for you, regularly eating unhealthy foods and takeaways. Am I saying you can never have one? Of course not. But it's with that regularity like everything. If you're applying that consistency of having regularly poor um, lack of nutrition food uh, in the aspect of over 50% of us, our basket is full of um, ultra processed foods. And with the ultra processed foods, they're highly palatable. They are normally exceptionally calorific. They have very little nutrients and minerals. Therefore, the hunger comes pretty soon thereafter. And it's not having that ability to know when enough is enough. Okay, so that's factor one that we have to really consider. Number two, and it's a common myth that needs dispelling, is that the only way that you're going to lose the body fat and the, the weight you desire is simply by doing cardio and cardio alone. Now, many people find it immensely boring. If you love it, great. Make it part of your routine. Of course, I'm never going to discourage something that you enjoy, but fundamentally just doing cardio isn't gonna see the fat loss results that you want to. Of course, it's not all bad. It's very good for our cardiovascular health, but we need to be much more mindful of the kind of food that we're eating, the nutrition that we're taking on, and we're putting into our mouths on a daily basis and not just relying on cardio. And obviously, um, if we can incorporate some weight training, some resistance training, it has a plethora of benefits, um, just instead of just doing the cardio approach. Now, I don't know if any of you saw, but I had my two penny worth when I saw Jane Moore make a, how do I put this diplomatically, a poor analysis in my professional and humble opinion about the only reason people really go and do weights is for the aesthetic reasons. And obviously we want to dispel that because if people are being brainwashed um, by the TV, and they're constantly taking in what people are saying that don't have a particular expertise in that particular field, then they might take that on and, and think that because she is slim uh, and she, in uh, people's eyes, they might deem that she is in shape, that she knows what she's talking about. And obviously, I, if you go into that short video that I expressed a lot of information about the real health benefits to why we need to look at strength training and incorporate that. And I've got a lot more on that particular topic coming through the week, so look out for that. Um, number three, not tracking your nutrition and exercise. Am I asking you to literally detail absolutely everything for the rest of your life? Absolutely not. But if you have no comprehension of the fuel that you're taking in, the type of fuel and, and how much that is coming to, how are you gonna know where you need to move forward or make some tweaks and changes? A bit like if you've got a bank account and you're not analysing exactly what's coming in every month from a wage or your business and then what's going out with all your various bills and shopping and whatever that might be, you'll come to the end of the month and if you've not analysed that, you could be hundreds if not thousands down and that's where a lot of people go wrong within their fat loss and wanted to see a change in their body composition is that they have no idea what's going in and what's going out. They aren't really taking any markers about what they're doing in the gym and then they're overwhelmed if we start to just track it slowly but surely and make some changes, then you will start to see the results that you need to see. Um, number four is um, insufficient protein. So in my experience of working with several hundreds of clients now, I would say up to maybe 95%, maybe even more, when I analyse the type of foods that they're eating and where those food sources are coming from, they are significantly low in protein. So that is something that we really delve into, go into great depth for the client, not just tell them they need to do that, give them the education, the understanding behind that and a sustainable approach to nutrition, but why it's so important for them to have a high protein diet. Number five, now this might sound counterintuitive, it's starving yourself. 
Now, in the aspect of, in my experience, working with lots of people, in the, the aspect of their fat loss goals, they feel they have to eat like rabbit food. They have to have very low calories because they've heard that Janice next door is only eating 500 calories and she's lost loads of weight. Well, of course she has because she's not fueling her body sufficiently. She's in such a massive calorie deficit that of course she's gonna lose that. However, it's highly unsustainable. We want to encourage people to be able to do this for the rest of their lives, not just for two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, the rest of your lives. So it has to be something that you enjoy and isn't a chore. So that's the sustainable approach. So rather than looking at, I've got to starve myself, I've got to get in that little dress next week or whatever it might be, planning, keeping that level of consistency is going to really help. And often with that, once you finish that two weeks of ridiculously low calories or have a moment period of time that is, you're gonna to want to binge eat. It's just naturally, if you've been depriving yourself for such a long period of time, the next time you get an opportunity of food and maybe your blood sugars have dipped, you'll just literally want to get normally the, the most palatable foods and the most convenient foods off the shelf and into your mouth as quickly as possible, rather than taking that long approach, enjoying the process and fueling your body sufficiently, okay? Number six, and the last point I said I really want to whiz through these, is setting unrealistic expectations. Often we set really um, arduous goals, and it's great to have big goals we want to achieve, but we kind of set them in two weeks, and then they become unrealistic, and we don't achieve them, and then we think, well, what's the point? We might as well just give up, rather than taking that slow and steady pace, setting ourselves realistic goals over a short period of time, and then as we get longer throughout the process and we continue this, then we can set those longer, more realistic goals. So rather than saying, I've got to lose a stone in two weeks, which of course is achievable, but in all of the wrong manners, how about we look at this at a lot longer aspect and something that is achievable? As I say to my clients, you know, stop looking at you've got to climb 8,000 feet in, in um, Mount kind of Everest. That's all you've got to do is climb a tiny molehill today Get that sorted, get that done, and then tomorrow is the same journey from there. So let me know with which points that I've shared with you resonates with the most. Doesn't matter if it's all six, whether it's just one, share them with me, and maybe if need be, I can delve in a little bit deeper with where you're struggling at the moment. Uh, that's it from me this evening, and uh, no doubt there'll be lots more posts going out to help you on your wellbeing journeys uh, coming up this week. Take care.